MBA 633 instructional video prepared by Professor Amit Tada, School of Management, George Mason University. In this segment, we will focus on the built-in functions that Excel provides to do probability calculations for the normal distribution. We will not be doing any problem solving per se in this segment. Uh, just we'll see how to master the built-in functions. Once we have that under our belt, the next uh, instructional clip that uh, I uh, develop in that we will do actual problem solving uh, with the normal distribution and then uh, <clears throat> we will assume that the built-in function exercise uh, has been understood. So <clears throat> consider a general um, normal distribution that's given to you over here. So it's a, it's a normal distribution with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation <clears throat> of 3. Okay, so how do we do probability calculations? And <clears throat> just for our reference, uh, to help us with the discussion, just notice these three uh, two letters that I provide, the letter A and the letter P. A is simply a position on the x-axis, okay? And P is the area under the normal distribution to the left of A, okay? The shaded yellow portion, its area is represented by P. So based on what you know about the uh, normal distribution, small p is equal to the probability of x, the random variable x, which has a normal distribution, being less than a. So p is the probability of x being less than a. <clears throat> now, uh, there are four built-in functions that Excel provides to deal with the normal distribution. And uh, you can categorize them in, in, in a systematic way so to help us remember what they are. <clears throat> um, one set of built-in functions ends in the word dist, so you can see norm dist, norm s dist. The other pair ends in inv, inverse, norm inverse, norm s inverse, okay? So you take any one set, let's say norm dist, and norm s dist, the difference is the letter s. The letter s stand, uh, signifies the standard normal distribution. So if you remember, a standard normal distribution is the special case of a normal distribution, which has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So I will show you simply how to use norm dist and norm inverse and whatever I say for those two apply equally well to norm s dist and norm s inverse. The only difference being you would use the latter two when you're dealing with a standard normal distribution. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at uh, a, a few uh, um, problems here. Let's say the first problem I want to solve is p less uh, probability of x less than or equal to 7. Uh, as you can see, what I've noted in the comments over here, you use either one of the dist built-in functions, that is norm dist or norm s dist, when you know A and you want to find P. In other words, you know your position on the x-axis and you want to know the area under the normal distribution to the left of that point. So you want to find a probability. So if you know A and want to find P, you will use one of these two dist functions. The converse is if you know p and you want to know and you want to compute where on the x-axis do I have to be in order for the area under the curve to the left to be p, then I will use the inverse function. So if I know p and I want to find a, I will use one of the inverse functions. If I know a and I want to find p, I will use one of the dist functions. I will use uh, norm dist or norm s dist. Okay, so let's try the first one. What is the probability of x less than or equal to 7? You can see that this normal distribution has a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 3. So it is not the standard normal distribution. It's a regular normal distribution. So since I know where I am on the x-axis and I want to find p, I will use norm dist. And you can see that it requires 1, 2, 3, 4 inputs. The first input is where are you on the x-axis? So that's 7. I want the probability of x less than or equal to 7. Then what is the mean of this normal distribution? It's 10. What's the standard deviation? It's 3. And this last parameter, since we are looking for an area to the left of A, in other words, it's a cumulative probability. I'm not looking for the height of any one spike this value will be 1. You remember what we did for the binomial and Poisson distribution. So for continuous distributions, particularly for the normal distribution, 
I'm willing to bet that 99.9% .9 of the problems that you uh, solve, you will use one for this last parameter cumulative. Okay. The main thing to remember is that uh, the Excel built-in function norm this always gives you the area to the left of the point where you are on the x-axis. So it will always give you the shaded portion to the left. Okay. Now, if you don't want that the area to the left, you'll have to do some uh, sort of uh, ge uh, ge uh, geometry. Okay. So we'll see that. <clears throat> so the answer is 15%. So the probability of X being less than or equal to 7 is 0.158 or 0.16. <clears throat> now, what is the probability of X being greater than 11? So here is 11. So obviously the probability of X being greater than or equal to 11 is the area to the right of 11 the area under the normal distribution to the right of 11. Unfortunately, the built-in function does not give that number to you directly. Okay, so let's first do equal to norm dist 11, the mean is 10, the standard deviation is 3, and cumulative is 1, and we get a number. Okay, it's 0.63, but this 0.63 is the area to the left of 11. Okay, always remember that Excel, the built-in function, norm dist, norm s dist, always gives you the area to the left of a point on the x-axis. Okay, it never gives you the area to the right. This is for the norm built-in function. So, since I want the area to the right of 11, you know how to solve that problem. Since the area under the curve must be 1, that's the cumulative cumulative the sample space is the area under the curve rather the probability of all outcome is the area under the curve <clears throat> so the probability of x being greater than or equal to 11 is simply 1 minus point, uh, 0.63 which is 0.37 okay all right now that you know this fact i think it's very easy to compute this last probability what is the probability of x uh, of 7 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 12? It's the shaded portion between 7 and 12. So if I have, mm, let's say, x equal to 7 over here and x equal to 12, <clears throat> so it would, I don't want to clutter up the diagram, but if this is 7 and this is 12, you would simply have the area under the bell-shaped curve between those two points, 7 and 12. And Excel does not give that to you directly, but I think by now you can guess how one would do that. You just do some geometry, you subtract areas. So we'll say equal to norm dist 12, 10, 3, comma 1. This is the area to the left of x equal to 12. And now let's do norm dist 7, comma 10, comma 3, comma 1. So this is the area to the left of 7. All right. So <clears throat> if I subtract one from the other, the first minus the second, this is the area between 7 and 12. So the probability of <clears throat> x being between 7 and 12 is 0.588. Okay. Now let's turn our attention to the second type of calculation that we might want to do. So find an A <clears throat> such that the probability of X less than or equal to A is equal to 0.35. So I, I'm, you are, I'm being told that I want to find a position on the X axis A such that the area to the left of A is 0.35. When you know the probability and you want to find the location on the X axis, you use the inverse function. So we'll do equal to norm inverse and it wants some numbers. So what probability, what is the area to the left that I'm being told that's 0.35. The mean is 10. The standard deviation is 3. So once I give these three inputs, it comes back with the value 8.8. .8. So basically it says that the probability of x being less than or equal to 8.8 .8 is 0.35. So you would have to be at the location on the x-axis would be 8.8. .8. This is the location where you have to be.
okay and that makes sense because the mean is 10 so obviously you would have to be to the left of 10 since the uh, normal distribution is a bell-shaped curve the area to the left of 10 is 50 percent the area to the right of 10 is 50 percent if i'm looking for an area to the left of 0.35 obviously i have to be somewhere below less than 10 and the calculation the, the built-in function tells me i have to be at 8.8 .8. now what if i'm told find a location on the x-axis such that the area to the right of that point is 0.35 so i want an a such the area to the right is 0.35 now excel does not work with right side areas you know, for the for the norm dist and norm inverse function but there's a very easy way around that if the area to the right of a is 0.35 the area to the left must be 0.65 because the area under the total bell curve is 1 so how do i find the location of point uh, of of a obviously it has to be something higher than 10 because the mean is 10 so let's see what it would turn out to be so we would say norm inverse and the probability i do not put 0.35 now i put 0.65 and i hope you see why because that's just uh, the way Excel, the, 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 the stamp <coughs> norm that Excel uh, uh, uses. The, the, it wants the left-hand side area, okay? Um, so I have to give it 0.65 as the input rather than 0.35 in order to find the correct location on the x-axis. So the probability is 0.65, the mean is 10, and the standard deviation is 3. I should get an answer that's somewhat higher than 10. And it turns out to be 11.1. So I have to be at 11.1. So in other words, the probability of x being greater than or equal to 11.1 is equal to 0 0.35. So I hope you see how to use these uh, four built-in functions. Everything that I just told you about norm dist and norm inverse would work exactly the same way for norm s dist and norm s inverse, provided the normal distribution that you have is a standard normal distribution. In other words, it would have the mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So keep in mind, the trick you have to keep in mind is that for the norm dist and norm inverse function, the probabilities or the area under the curve that Excel gives you or wants is the area to the left of a point on the x-axis. Once you keep that you know, rule in mind, that's the rule that Excel uses, um, everything else uh, should be easy to do. You can use the area to the left, or if you need to, you will do one minus uh, the area, depending on what probability you want to compute. So this is how Excel works. And in the next uh, video clip, we will uh, actually work some probability problems with the normal distribution and uh, these built-in functions.